Hi, kiddos. This is Mrs. Weaver. I am a fifth grade language arts teacher at the Intermediate School. If you haven't seen me around, um, I'm pretty hidden in a corner. So I'm going to read with you today chapter one of Washed Up. If you are receiving this, then you guys need to make sure you are following along. We have a neat way we're going to do that. We're going to have the words up on the screen so you can follow along with us as we read it to you. You also should have your Cornell notes at the top of it for our essential question today. We are going to be focusing on how do readers identify relationships and interactions in text and how do writers develop a topic? So those are going to be our essential questions that we're going to think about as we are listening today. Here are our questions that are on our Cornell notes. So who are the main characters in chapter one of Washed Up? What is the similarity for these families? Number two, what is the setting and why are the characters there? Provide text evidence. Number three, how might the Walpole family not be prepared for the survival contest? Provide text evidence. And then number four, what is the main challenge that has been revealed so far in the story? So as we're reading, make sure, as I'm reading, make sure you're following along and answering your Cornell note questions. You can pause this, you can rewind it, you can rewatch it, whatever you need to do to help you get these questions answered. So let's go ahead. We're going to jump into chapter one. Chapter one, washed up. Written by Payal Capita and illustrated by Robin Boyden. All right. Chapter one. This is the Indian Ocean's best kept secret, an island so far from civilization, you won't find it on any map, an island untouched by humans until now. Pop sensation, Barry Blue, was shouting out the last word of every sentence over the dim, over the din made by Channel 16 Chopper. chopper. She was traveling in. She was so excited, she found it hard to stay in her seat. What better spot for the biggest, baddest reality show on the planet? Welcome to Washed Up. What Barry Blue said next was drowned out by the wind. Did you get a picture with her? Shin's mother asked, leaning forward in her seat. She looks famous. Shin Lu bit down hard on her tongue. It wouldn't be appropriate to give her mother attitude, but she was clamoring for a picture without even the faintest idea who Barry Blue was. And everyone knew who Barry Blue was. She's a little glamorous for the middle of nowhere, isn't she? Commented Shin's twin sister, Mai. She's not setting foot on the island, silly said Shin, directing her irritation at her. She's the anchor of the program. Shh, listen. Thousands of families vied for a chance to be part of Washed Up, the planet's most talked about survival series, Barry Blue was now saying. And of all those applicants, three families showed they had what it takes. I have the first contestant, the lovely Luz, here with me now. Smile, hissed Miss Lou as the camera trained on the family, and she posed in a practically in a practiced way. The other two families, the Walpoles and Garcias, are traveling by boat to the other side of the island, continued Barry Blue. She had the attention of the cameras again before they zoomed in on the sleek speedboat slicing through the unending turquoise waters far below. Three unknown environments await these family, and three survival kits, one with a mosquito net, others with a length of rope. Then there are tarps, matches, and knives for everyone. 
For three weeks, our contestants must rely on themselves and no one else. The winners get a book deal, a round-the-world book tour, and a generous cash prize. But, of course, to win, they'll need your votes, and they'll need to make it out alive. And they will. Right? She winked at the camera. So here it is, the island. Isn't it gorgeous? The island rose up before their eyes, an emerald green sea monster. There was a golden strip of sandy beach, a mountain wrenched in mist, and a lush jungle. Shin and Mai gasped. This island is the ultimate survival challenge for our contestants, said Barry Blue, batting her eyelashes as the helicopter dipped low. Adapt, win votes, and win the contest. Don't, and who knows what might happen. Like she knows anything about survival, muttered Shin. But Mai silenced him with a look. The cameras were on them now as they aligned on the wind-whipped mountain slope while Barry Blue waved goodbye wildly. Bye! You better watch what you say, whispered Mai as both children took to the flying cameras orbiting the ocean because we're on TV from now until we leave. Well, I was only about to say that down there, it looks like a tropical paradise, cried Shin, his eyes dazzled by the sweep of the ocean far below the mountains, the sun glitting off the waves. Down below, fresh off the speedboat, Mr. Walpole was about to say the same thing, but his wife beat him to it. Sun, sand, sea, she exclaimed. There's nothing like the simple pleasures in life. Oliver rolled his eyes. His parents vacationed at fancy hotels that had room service, not only for dining, but also for treatments. Pillows and towels. What did they know about simple? The speedboat turned away with the Garcia still on board, bound for the coastal mangroves. The Garcias watched the Walpoles, hot footing the silver thin strip of sand searing in the midday sun towards the cool shade of the rainforest then their boat rounded a bend and they were all alone it was deathly silent as the skipper cut the engine letting the boat glide gently into the mangrove swamp that would be home to the Garcias for the next three weeks. Mr. Garcia gazed at the muddy sludge around him, his jaw twitching. It'll be okay, Papa, lied Gabriella. As she surveyed the murky water, she swallowed so shallow that the gnarled root of the trees snaked above the waterline like the tangled hair of Medusa. It couldn't be easy for Mr. Garcia. He had never been the adventurous type. He was happy working the same job for 20 years, living in the same house, and doing a pretty good job of raising his daughter on his own. That is, until the company he worked for suddenly shut down and he lost his job. Then a new reality series called Washed Up asked for volunteers, and Gabriella's father did the unthinkable unthinkable. He applied. The tide will come in soon, said Gabriella, squinting at the solid wall of roots stretching out in front of them. So we'd better find higher ground. Meanwhile, the Loos were doing some climbing of their own. The chopper had dropped them off next to a steep mountain slope. Shen and Mai were as nimble as mountain goats, but Mr. and Mrs. Lu kept stopping to wave at the cameras and to catch their breath. Mai shivered. The wind was vicious above the tree line, 
Far above them loomed the snow-covered volcano. Right now, it was hard to imagine that this was once the site of a powerful eruption spewing red-hot lava for miles around. There's not enough wood here to build both a shelter, a fire and a shelter, said Shin. The Lu siblings had seen enough survival shows to know that they would need both soon. May glanced up. The sun would go down over the mountain in a few hours. We'll head downhill first thing tomorrow to where the tree cover thickens, she said. That's fine, said Mr. Lu. Now blow a kiss to the camera. And here you can see the family climbing the mountain. And these are the little cameras that they have. Closer to sea level, Oliver Walpole hurried, hurried his mother past the scorpion scuttling across the forest floor. His mother's island euphoria would give way to utter panic if she saw any of these nasties. It's marvelous, isn't it? She exclaimed, oblivious. Suffocation would have been a better word to describe it, Oliver thought. It was hotter than one of the beaches, even though only a shink of greenish light pierced the forest canopy. Here, let me wash that. Mrs. Walpole screeched, and before Oliver could stop her, Mr. Mrs. Walpole had spilled half their thermos of water on the small fruit he had just picked up. You shouldn't have done that, Mom, he protested a little loudly. His heart sank. Their water, ration, water rations were down to half already. Many miles away, Barry Blue, in an animal print dress now, was speaking to the cameras again. Don't they look like they're having so much fun, she purred. Things always start out that way. And then a sharp glint came to her eyes as she said, but their rations will soon run out, and daylight too, and then darkness, hunger, and thirst will set in. Here, she tittered. And that's when the real fun begins, dear viewers. It only gets better or worse. That is our end of our chapter today, but there's an interactive feature, so let's see what it does. This just gives you an idea of the island and where the different families are. So we have the mountains. We have the beach, and then we have the mangroves. So the mangroves are where the family is that are on their boat. Then we have the beach where, you know, there's walking around on the beach. And then we have the mountain with the family that is currently climbing the mountain to try and get to the top. So I'm going to put our chapter one questions back up for you. And don't forget, these are the questions that are on your Cornell notes that you need to answer. If for some reason you don't have Cornell notes, you can't get on the internet. You should have the paper with these printed out for you. And there's also a quick check to go along with this chapter. And chapter two, Mrs. Weaver Read Aloud, will be coming soon. You guys have a good night. Bye.